plus 6 is 13, plus 7 is 20. And also in this question, we were told 20 people were asked this question. So if 7 out of 20 prefer Coke, that fraction is 7 out of 20. If 6 out of 20 prefer Pepsi, then that fraction is 6 out of 20, which could be simplified. We could write 3 out of 10 for that one. Mountain Dew, 4 out of 20. So we would write that fraction. And finally, Dr. Pepper is 3 out of 20. So let me switch this up. Let me change the color. So if we're dealing with degrees, and we know in the entire circle that there are that there are 360 degrees in the entire circle, what we have to do is we have to take the 6 over 20 and times by 360. And really I've got the number on the top as well, so I should put my 360 in there, but I need to do 7 over 20 and then times it by 360. For the next one, we'd have 6 over 20, which is the fraction and we times it by 360. The next one is 4 out of 20, which could be simplified to 1 fifth, and we times by 360. We're using 360 because that's the total number of degrees that are in a circle. The final one is 3 out of 20, and we would times that by 360, and that equals. So I could grab a calculator and type and enter in all of these, which I will do in a second. Now percents, percents are a little different because we're no longer interested in 360 for percents. The number, the main number we're interested in is 100 because percents are out of 100. So we would still use the same fraction that we have over here. We would still use 7 over 20, but this time we would times by 100. For the next one, we have 6 over 20, and we would times by 100. Next one, 4 over 20 times by 100. And finally, 3 over 20, 100. All right, so the percent should be fairly easy because we can simplify most of them. So 4 over 20 is really 1 over 5. 1 over 5 times 100 is 20. So this one's 20%. 300 over 20, which would be 15%. Okay, 6 over 20 is really 3 over 10. So that would be 30%. And this one would be 35%. So let's just double check that I did this correct. So I got 35, 65... 85, 100. They all add up to 100%, which is great. Okay, so I'm going to use a calculator. I'm going to cheat for the others. So 7 divided by 20 and times by 360. So this one gives me 126 degrees. The next one. So that gives me 108 degrees degrees. The next one. Gives me 72 degrees. And finally, equals 54 degrees. So if we need to, we could check by adding these all together. So we do 54 plus 72 plus 108 plus 126 and it does give me a total of 360 degrees, which is great. So the next step here, the thing that we kind of have to be very careful about is drawing our circle graph and also labeling it. So let's take a look, let's try and do this. So if we grab a circle, and I'm only gonna do it very small at the bottom, just grab a circle, let's put it right there. So the very first thing to do in this circle graph is to start our cells off with the radius. So there it goes. We have a circle, we have a radius. Now we need to 
Make sure we understand how to use a protractor. We need to line it up on the zero. And we can start off with any of these. I would probably start off with the biggest, which is 126 degrees. So I would measure my angle 126 degrees, and I'm just guesstimating right now. Please do not do this in the test. I would measure it. And then you also have to do two things. You have to label it. So you have to write in there the title of that label, which is Coke. And also you must, must, must label the number that is the percent. So this one would be 35%. Please do not label the angle. You do not need to. Whoever is scoring your test will measure your angles to make sure that you have correctly measured them, that you've ac accurately drawn them. Okay, the next one that you would need to do is you need to measure 108 degrees. So I'm kind of just gonna guesstimate this again. Let's put it there. This one is Pepsi. So we're gonna write in the, in the label Pepsi and we are also gonna label the actual percent, which is 30%. Again, you must have measured this correctly with your protractor. Almost at the end, we need to measure, we need to measure the angle 72 degrees, which is Mountain Dew, and we need to label that as 20%. So, hopefully that's roughly correct. This is Mountain Dew, and this one is 20%. Notice how much you're using the unit, which is percent. And I'm also labeling them. Finally, we know the last one has to be Dr. Pepper. And we need to label the percent again, which is 15%. And if we measured this angle, it should be 54 degrees. If it isn't 54 degrees, we made a big error. We might have to start over. Number 10 is all about things related to sampling. Sampling, we've got to think about bias. We have to think about valid data or invalid data. And number 10 talks about a principal who is conducting a survey to find out people's favorite cafeteria food in his school. He decides to ask one in every three people who passes office doorway to gather the information. Do you think this will lead to useful information? Is the survey valid? And explain your answer with any advice for Mr. Jones. So the first thing is, this will probably produce some useful information. However, the survey isn't strictly valid. It does contain bias. So we must write somewhere that this survey does contain some bias. We must write this and we must say that the survey is technically invalid. And it's for a few reasons. The first reason is to do with the location. And that is because the principal may not have an office that every single person passes. They may do, in which case that wouldn't be a factor, but we don't know that. The second thing is that if he is asking, if he is conducting the survey to try and find people's favorite cafeteria food, and he asks one in every three people, which is a good random way to do it, he may in fact be asking people who have never eaten in the cafeteria. And so if he is asking people who have never eaten in the cafeteria what their favorite cafeteria food is, they may be honest and not answer. They may lie. They may just point to something. So 
they may give answers that technically aren't random or correct or valid. So the second part is to do with him asking people who strictly are not part of the population. So he's asking people who may never have eaten the food in the cafeteria. Okay, so it's really for these reasons. So in answering this question, we should use sentences. We should mention bias. We should mention that the survey is technically invalid. We should offer suggestions because it does say explain your answer with any advice. So the advice could be that he conducts his survey inside the cafeteria over the over the week, maybe he asks a bunch of people each day. It is, however, good to have a random survey so we could tell him that he's definitely doing that correctly. Eleven. Question number 11. So 20 people were asked if they like Cheerios or cornflakes. Five people like Cheerios. So five liked Cheerios. Nine liked cornflakes. And four people liked both. We were told that 20 people were asked. So we can't just add these up and think they should add up to 20. This is not true. This is not the case. So let's take a look what we need to do because we're asked to do a Venn diagram. So a Venn diagram in seventh grade any, anyways has a universe, which is the big rectangle. And it also has two circles which overlap. So this is a Venn diagram. The first thing we should do is we should put our sigma. Sigma is this Greek letter and it stands for sum of. So really the sum of the people asked should be 20. So we should label that on our Venn diagram, 20. And really, you know what? Let me put it in the right place. Okay, so really we should put the sigma over here. Sigma equals 20 people. Okay, so four liked both. Well, we got to label it. If these are Cheerios and these are cornflakes, and we know that four liked both, we would put our four there. We know nine liked cornflakes. Well, nine are the people who are in Nine are the people who are in this entire circle right here. So nine is everything. Well, we already have four. So the difference between nine and four is five. And we could do that here. Nine like cornflakes. Well, we already have the four, so let's take that away. So five people like cornflakes only. These four like cornflakes and Cheerios. And over here for Cheerios, we know five like Cheerios. Well, 